Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Kenrick Forrester, and I want to thank you guys for coming in and checking out my video. <clears throat> Basically, what I'm doing is a reaction video to a fighter. I'm in the fight world. Um, I don't actually fight professionally, but I really enjoy martial arts and training and uh, learning all the things that you can learn through the arts. Um, and I've always liked watching different videos on what people, you know, in the fight world do, people who are in the professional standing, people who are um, getting so-called clout, you know, for their martial arts and their growth. So right now I, I've been looking into, and I came across this um, woman here. I know it looks pretty massive, but it's a woman. Um, her name is Gabby Garcia. And what Gabby is known for is for her Brazilian jiu-jitsu, right? So she's world champ in jiu-jitsu. Um, she has like seven wins, zero losses. She's 235 pounds of raw muscle, um, six foot two inches tall, um, and just a, just a massive woman. So basically... What I'm here to look for is to see if she really has the skill because it's stated that she's world-class or is it the, because of her size and the opponents that she's being put up against that's causing her to um, have the social standing that she has, right? So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and we're going to check out this video. Now, they're also thinking about putting her up against males and this is the crazy part she's looking to go up against people with more um i guess someone who can actually match her power a little better um but let's talk about let's let's talk to about this okay let's let's go into this here oh, heavyweight MMA MMA fighters. Fighters. let's start that over all right here we go how would Gabby Garcia do in the men's division in MMA? Does she have a chance? Gabby Garcia is a freak of nature. Standing at 6 feet 2 inches and weighing a staggering 235 pounds, she is one fearsome woman. A professional martial artist with a... With a so if we go back real quick right here. Alright. Woman. woman. A professional... Profe when you look at the size difference in her versus the ref versus the other female, that alone is that that is alone is imposing on a, a, a opponent or a fight, fighter. Just seeing the size difference, right? That's why you have heavyweights versus middleweights versus lights. You know, that's why you have the different weight classes. This does not look like an even weight class, right? Professional martial, martial artist martial. with a specialty in jujitsu, Gabby Garcia has, has As you can see, she just muscled that girl down. It wasn't nothing to do with, well, I guess she did play place a little skill in there, but mo 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 mainly all she did was muscle her down. Also tasted a significant amount of success in MMA. She currently has a 7-0 record. One of the bouts was a no contest. Four of the remaining six were... were See, she does have some skills, so you do see her doing, um, even if you pay attention, when she got the arm, um, her opponent was holding on to her hands, and she did locked it up and did a slight lean towards the left before she pulled back. And that's the way you break the, the lock on the fist. No, no matter how strong they lock, that's the way you break it. ...were won by submission, and two were concluded by technical knockout. As a result, Garcia remains undefeated in female mixed martial arts. And that begs the, the question. question. She's definitely doing the right move and slipping her arm underneath the arm and locking up that, that wrist, locking that arm. With a physique like hers, how would she fare in the men's division of MMA? Well, in this video, we want to explore that. <laughs> Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click on the bell icon so you never miss any of our upcoming videos. videos. 
make sure you do that for me as well like subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos as I get better throughout this time the videos are gonna be nice let's go and with that done let's turn our attention back to the intimidating Gabby Garcia notice they use the word automatically for her intimidating her size is imposing and when you put up some other with that stature against a female nine times out of ten just her size and impop and this her the way she overstands alone is going to make them lose their um ground gabby garcia was born on november 17th 1985 in porto alegre rio grande do sul brazil and from the point of her birth, it was clear that she was always destined to be a fighter. Or how else do you explain being related to six well-known Brazilian combat? She doesn't look like she has boxing hands, like she's like slapping. Slap, 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 slap. At sports athletes, Mitsuyo Maeda, Carlos Gracie, Helio Gracie. Okay, so that's three names already that top list when it comes to jiu-jitsu. Rolls Gracie, Romero Calvacante, and Fabio Gurgel. Some good people that's back in there. Uh, if th if these, are all, these are all her relatives. That's, that's a big list to live up to. They're all relatives of Garcia's. So before she even knew it, her destiny was always going to be in and around combat sports. However, it didn't start out that way. In her early teens, Garcia was. was what we just said about the size difference, like, and she's a little bit bigger. This uh, woman here got a little size to her, but Gabby is just massive. Like, she's just big, naturally bigger, and more posing than any one of them. Fascinated by other sports. We're talking about handball, volleyball, field hockey, and most likely soccer. You can't be Brazilian and not love soccer now, can you? But later, her family would move to Sao Paulo, and this is where Garcia would really get into martial, martial arts. Art. And she looked like she did take some kind of, you know, boxing, but... And I seen her fight with... Uh... We'll talk about it in a little bit, but one of, one of the girls in here she fought with actually knocked her down, and after she knocked her down, that boxing went out the window. Training At Sao Paulo, her uncle took her under his wings and began to train her in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. For years, Garcia and her uncle would train together. However, Garcia hadn't quite decided to go full-time with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, at least not yet. She would eventually make that decision while she was still in her final year in college studying advertising. She would later begin to train with Fabio Gugel at the Alliance team in Sao Paulo, Brazil. With her mind now fully focused on jiu-jitsu. This is Leda Tapa. Leda Tapa knocked her down with a nice left hook. Um, after that left hook landed and she hit the floor, she actually fell into the ropes. She got up, and everything after that was like, like two women fighting in the streets. Women slaps coming over the over the top. Garcia began her martial arts career in 2008. Gabby Garcia earned a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, establishing herself as a master of the art. With her mastery of Jiu-Jitsu, Garcia would go on to claim six world Jiu-Jitsu titles. That's what I'm saying. Is it really mastery or is it just the fact that she's just a big girl? Like everybody I've seen her that she's been put up against has not been that imposing. Very small women. So is it that the fact that she's really just that good or just that big? As well as four Abu Dhabi Combat Club championships. Her fourth ADDC title came in 2019 in a fight against Karina. Karina. They can't even hold her down. They're so small that every time they try to put her in any kind of move, she just literally pushes them off of her. It's an unfair lineup, unfair battle. Asante, which she won by submission. 
a master at applying some mission maneuvers. With her victory over Karina Santi, Garcia became the first woman to win four ADDC titles. How do you get a house up off of you? How do you get a house up off of you? It's like trying to move a house and using your arms and your legs, right? Garcia's foray into mixed martial arts has also been impressive. With her dominant performances at the World Jiu-Jitsu performances, Garcia became a target of MMA organizations looking to feature her in their main events. She would eventually make her MMA debut in December 2015 when she came up against Lee De Tapa for Ryzen Fighting Federation. The match didn't last long as Tapa was no match for Garcia, and in just the first round, Garcia was awarded the victory by technical knockout. Garcia's next match came in April 2016 when she went up against Anna Malyakova. This time around, the match went into the second round, but the outcome was inevitable as Garcia defeated Malyakova using an armbar submission move. Next up was Destiny Yarborough at Ryzen World Grand Prix 2016 on September 25th, 2016. This one didn't last long either. Garcia ended the match in the first round after using an Americana submission hold. At Ryzen 4, Garcia was billed to face Shinobu Kandori. However, due to injury, Kandori was forced to pull out and she was replaced by <laughs> Kandori is a professional wrestler. She came in the ring and started running against the ropes. This was not even a match. She came in the ring bouncing off of the ropes. She was a professional wrestler. She did not know what she was getting into. When I saw this match, I was dying. She came in here, popping from corner to corner, hitting the ropes and bouncing off. Till she got caught. <laughs> when um, she got tired of it and caught her, caught her on the run. All right, let's go. By Yumiko Hata. Poor Hata, she stood no chance. In the first round, Garcia ended the bout via a technical knockout. Garcia then lost a chance to finally have a match with Shinobu Kandori on December 29th, 2017. After, After she missed weight, but this fighter looked like she was ready. She was, <laughs> she was looking at her like, what the hell are you? You're a big woman, and I'm not going to even bother to try to fight you. Oh, you miss weight? Phew. Phew. Missing the weight requirement by a massive 28 pounds. I know she's been missing weight. There's no way this is the first time you miss weight. Look at the size of you. You are a huge mammoth of a woman. So this is not the first time you lost weight. You've been over the weight limit. <laughs> and so the match was canceled. Then in December 2008, that look on her opponent's face was like, whew, let me get up out of here. 18, Garcia came up against Barbara Napomacino. You know, why would they let her hit this beautiful, oh my, the Barbara Duck, when she see that fits coming. I'm, good job, girl. And just like many of her previous matches, Garcia won the fight in the first round thanks to another successful submission move. None of the women Garcia faced came remotely close to beat. But you know that because just with her size alone, she's just physically stronger than they are. That's the imposing part about it. Beating her. And this was no surprise. For a woman, Garcia looks like a freak of nature. Not only is she incredibly tall and strong, but she is also an extremely gifted fighter with a mastery of grappling and submission techniques thanks to her training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. However, this year, Garcia lost her first professional jiu-jitsu fight in That's what I'm talking about. I forgot about years. When she went up against Amanda Leeds. 
The victory stunned the world of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as no one saw it coming. But perhaps Garcia's loss happened because she's lost interest in fighting females. Clearly, she showed that she wanted a new challenge when, after the loss to Leaves, she began to call out several high-profile Jiu-Jitsu male fighters, challenging them to a duel. This is... She's trying to go for it. She finally got lost. She realized there was more that she needed to learn. She knew she was too imposing to sit and fight these women. She needs to be the small person. She realized she needs to be the small person. She needs these men who can toss her around so that she can fight and use her jiu-jitsu skills to the full of their ability. Because she realized that even being the bigger woman, her jiu-jitsu skills was not to the max. Because just like I said, you you got beat by Levy. Leaves showed her that her jiu-jitsu skills was nothing compared to all, all the massiveness that she's been using against her opponents. It's not that you have great skills. See how Lee was, was moving? That skill, what you have, is just a big size, a big form, and just using that size and form to basically bully the other women. I'm not trying to put shade on your accomplishments in any way, but it's just her size. Including the, the likes, likes of Gordon and Ryan. Ryan. Garcia, Garcia didn't, didn't get her way with Ryan, but she managed to get an agreement with ADDC medalist Craig Jones. As of now, though, no official plans have been made for their intergender match. However, this agreement got many thinking. If Garcia was truly looking for a serious challenge, how about Kyle how Pete? Pete? <laughs> That was it. That was when she bounced off the ropes a few times. That's, that's exactly what that was. I don't know how we got way back there. <coughs> but that's what was going on right there. That's when she bounced off the ropes. How did we get way back there? I don't know. I think we'll come from right here. Their intergender match. match. However, this agreement got many thinking. If Garcia was truly looking for... That's it. She ran the last time off the rope, caught her. Put her back on the rope, hit her again, put her back on the rope. Hit her one more time, put her back on the rope, and then she was down. This was the quickest match, and she did not know what she was getting into. She thought she was in a real wrestling match because so girl looking like a wrestler. She thought it was going to be a fun hopping off the top of the ropes, landing on each other safely. <laughs> this was not safe to her. She didn't expect to run into a train and get hit by a train, and then the train hit you again. But in between you... You're hitting the train and the train, and then you're hitting a, a, a springboard back into the front of the train as the train is coming forward. You're getting blasted, blasted, and blasted back. After a while, she couldn't take it. She just crippled down and fall. That was it. Over with. Let's go. For a serious challenge, how about calling out the likes of Arjun Bular, Ryan Bader, and Francis Naganau? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? You're trying to get this woman killed in the ring. Francis Nagano? Like, you about to have this woman get... We're gonna leave her. Leave her alone. Okay, go ahead and call them out. Go ahead and call them out. Like, they probably will take it easy because you're a woman, even with your size. But you walk in the ring, the way that you look, you, you're asking for something more than than you can handle. A man, when a man hits you, is different than when a, when a woman hits you. And one of those women did knock you out with a single swing. So when one of these men hit you, it's going to be a whole different rattle in your brain, especially this dude. And challenging them to a heavyweight MMA fight. But the and those are the guys that's her size. That's the problem. That is who is her size. And then she's fighting these little women. You don't see those guys fighting no lightweight, midweight, middleweights. They fight heavyweights. All right? They fight heavyweights. Why? Because that's the weight class that they have to stick to, to in order to make the fights fair. Now, while the woman, even though you're their weight, you don't have their stature. The question is, how would she fare in such a fight? Let's answer the question about weight classes first. As we said earlier, Garcia weighs 235 pounds. 
the current UFC heavyweight champion Francis Naganow weighs 263 pounds. By the way, Garcia has been known to reach 265 pounds herself. Ryan Vader weighs 205 pounds, while Arjen Bolar weighs 235 pounds. So yes, technically speaking, Garcia can challenge any one of these guys to a fight. But, but she can challenge them. But did you see that uppercut Nagadol hit that dude with? She get hit with that. We won't hear from her for about a month or two. She's going to be asleep for about a month or two. Don't do it. But of course, it's unlikely that any of their respective MMA organizations would sanction an intergender fight. More importantly, would it even be worth it? But did you see that blow? See, if she was to be getting hit with those kind of blows, with the way that she's slapping out there, they would probably sue you after the, the hit connects. Like, this kind of blows that these guys are hitting each other with is not something that a woman, even with her size, can go in here and just shake off. Like, these guys shake it off. Does Garcia stand a chance? Physically, it might seem like a good match, but not exactly. While Gabby Garcia's weight, height, and overall physique might be comparable to her male counterparts in MMA, that does not mean she's capable of competing with them on a professional level. And this all boils down to body structure. She may be 235 pounds of pure muscle, but her body structure will be inherently different from a man of the same, same. Exactly. Exactly. She, she's like, if you just watch how she's moving compared to how those different gentlemen were moving, it, it's just more aggressive as males when you look at this fight compared to when a female is fighting. We look like we're about to kill each other. When the two females are fighting, it looks like we know it's, <laughs> sometimes we, we think nobody's even going to get knocked out. It doesn't seem like there's heavy blows that can actually knock you out. There are, but it doesn't look like there's heavy blows that can knock you, really knock you out. With a guy, even the first punch looked like it'll knock you out because we put everything into it. Wait and build. A man with a similar body build to Garcia's, being a man, will have a stronger skeletal muscles, connective tissues, higher bone density, and so on. And this is just down to the fact that, from birth, men are just built differently from women. It's all about biology. Facts. Oops. Now, against an average American dad of the same weight and age, sure, Garcia will have a field day. But it, but it, all right, yo, so I'm going to end it there. But that's really what it is, right? She may be very strong and she may be you know able to stand and 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 win against these uh, women that she's competing with but when it comes to a man the the whole fight is different for her he'll be coming way more aggressive if he's fighting her truthfully um his hits will be heavier than any female she's ever gotten hit by um his aggression and and the way that he's would, would be uh backing her down will be a lot different from the females that she's fought. She's always been the aggressor. Um, if if he has good jiu-jitsu, his jiu-jitsu will be just on par as the female that she has fought and lost to that, that may be that or his strength level might still be as strong as she is or even stronger still and causing her to lose her edge. So that's why I feel like she really does want to go fight against males because she wants to see if her edge, which is her strength, can compete in that standing, but also to test her jiu-jitsu and make her jiu-jitsu better. Because against an opponent that is better than you in those forms, you will constantly get better by pushing yourself to find ways to win. So with that being said, this was one of my earliest videos. I want to thank everyone for joining me. I'll thank everyone for that sat through and watched my video with me. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. Again, 
Killer Game Forester is out and we're gone.